Hello. We had some kind of odd weather this week and we went out and filmed a good amount of fishing and stuff like that. But it was just so windy that when we started watching the footage, you couldn't hear anything I was saying. And I felt like I was doing an okay job of giving like a pretty good play by play of what was happening. But once I put it on the computer, all you could hear was wind while seeing my mouth move. So I figured it would be easiest for this week's travel update. We just, you know, yesterday was our eighth day on the road. Today's our ninth day of living in this, this Airstream. And we've spent the past few days in Taos, New Mexico area. So I figured it'd be easiest for us to just do like a, a little update here and, you know, just show you kind of some of what happened. We learned a lot this past week about the importance of simple fixes on the Airstream. When something small goes wrong, if you do not take care of it immediately, it could turn into something very large. And we had a lot of small things go wrong. It's absolutely seen better days. All right, that ought to do it. Now this should close it won't be pretty but it's shut just such is life when you have a, a you know you're staying in an airstream that's 20 my math 27 years old so things are just gonna you know break rust things like that and it's on top we, we have to stay on top of it essentially i started to tattoo this week again at magical tattoo here in taos and I've only done one so far, but I've got appointments over the weekend. We've been taking it pretty easy and, and pretty mildly on tattooing. Fishing wise, we've been fishing a, a pretty good amount. There is a reservoir just over the hill or over the mountain, I should say, called Eagle's Nest. And it is really neat. I, I fished a handful of places since being here, but this place didn't seem like it would take any damage from me talking about it on the internet. You know, some little places like little creeks and special spots like that, you just want to keep quiet. But Eagle's Nest, there's a lot of people there every day. I don't feel bad talking about it. But it's just this giant reservoir that gets a crazy amount of, it's not even actually that big. It's probably two miles across, but it's a big reservoir. It just gets a crazy amount of wind on it. And there are very large rainbow trout and a lot of pike. And then I found out about a few other species last night. There's carp and there's yellow perch. It, it's just a really neat place. So what we've been fishing with there for these large rainbows is just a 1 16th ounce olive marabou jig by PJ's Finesse on 4X, about three to four foot under a very large indicator. With the wind being as choppy as it is, it's easiest to have something pretty bright that you can see on top of the water. And it's taking just the furthest cast we have to get it out past the drop off line. It's like a pretty slow incline and then it finally gets deep enough to, you know, deep enough to hold these cruising fish. So we're putting our cast out as far as we can and just watching these bobbers. It is relatively boring until you hook a fish, but they are just as strong as they can be. Those rainbows are so strong. And I even caught a pretty nice pike on a marabou jig under an indicator on 4X and, and somehow it didn't break me off until I got it mostly up on land. You are supposed to keep every pike that you catch out of there. They want to get them out of there. And I, the one pike that I did catch, I wasn't targeting them yet. And I was very ill prepared to keep fish. I didn't have a stringer. I didn't have a, a fillet knife or anything. I just so luckily for us, there was a very nice old man in his, his late 60s named Raymond fishing next to us, who was very cool. At first, we get to the water and he walks all the way around. There's no one out there and he comes and stands right next to us. And I was like, oh, great. And then uh, once I caught the fish and asked him if he wanted to keep it, we started talking and he was just super kind. Ha <laughs> ha 
Yeah, I really like that. He's showing off. A really cool thing that happened at Eagle's Nest yesterday as we were leaving, I, there's a creek that feeds in and I walked out to fish the inlet and it was very unproductive. But as I was leaving, I started seeing fish moving in the shallows and realized that there were sucker fish spawning there. Now, I don't know a lot about sucker fish and this was the, this was the very windy day. So everything that I said about it just got drowned out. But I don't know a lot about sucker fish. I, I know about, you know, just the smallest amount you can. So I don't know if these were red horse or white suckers. I think they were white suckers, but it was pretty easy to catch them using a, I had a Pat's rubber legs as my top fly. And then this thing, I think it's called bluegill candy or bluegill crack is my bottom fly.
<laughs> Murph, come here. targets these fish. I don't ever target these fish. This is super rare. It's just one of those things where we're just walking by the stream and see them rolling and they start casting through and they start eating. So I gotta take advantage of it. Oh shit. I'm gonna get down there and get him. Go down there. The wind is blowing. Uh, the wind is blowing pretty wildly. It blew us off the river or off the lake. It was just way too much. So we're walking up this little creek on the way back and there's sucker fish spawning. So we just take a moment and start, you know, trying to catch them. And it totally made the day. It's so funny because sucker fish are a fish that no one wants to catch. People joke around about catching them. People get upset when they catch them. And we, we had a pretty rough moment down there and then coming back up in this tiny little creek just getting to catch a bunch of really nice sucker fish. What a cool day. <laughs> 